So it's 60 degrees on February 23rd. Crazy weather. Uh, we had a horrible storm last night, lots of rain. Uh, tomorrow, temperatures are gonna drop and we're gonna have a week where we don't really get above freezing. But today I have two things I wanna do. First, in the last video, I showed you a couple hives had a lot of moisture on the inner covers and I figured out why that is and I'm gonna explain why that happened and what I'm gonna to do to fix it in the future on the next version of the Bee Barn. And also, there's activity in front of every hive right now. So I'm gonna go into each hive and check cluster size and just see what is going on. All right, if you've been following along in the channel, you know that this beehive is highly, highly insulated. We have a, a regular Langstroth hive inside this box. Then it's wrapped with two inches of insulation, one and a half inches of cedar on the outside. This box up here is filled with insulation. Polystyrene starts right here, just above the inner cover and goes up. So this is insulated and this is insulated. The reason that I have this angle here is for water to shed away from the hive. The beehive is right behind this little crack here. That's where the, the hive box begins. And I didn't want any water coming off the roof going backwards into the hive, so I made these angles. To make the angles, I had to stop the insulation down here and angle the insulation up. So the, the insulation kind of angles like this, up to zero, up in here. Then these boards go on top and meet up with the beehive. That's the problem with this design. This here is exposed to the outside air, so this is cold. This gets cold, this whole board here gets cold and touches the inner rim of the top of the beehive box. Where cold meets warm, humid air on the inside of the hive, you get condensation. That's why that ring of condensation on the inner cover formed, because this whole thing was cold up here inside the hive. It, it kind of crept in there. The bees kept the middle of the inner cover warm with their cluster, but the outer edges were cold. So the cold is making its way in here, but, but not like blowing in, it's just, it's a thermal bridge that, go, that goes in like this, because this is cold and it's touching wood, which transfers inside the hive. I did make those outer shells and I thought that was gonna solve the problem. And the reason I didn't put them on is because I realized even if those were on here, this is still a thermal bridge to the inside because this board is touching the beehive. So even if I had a piece of insulation down here, this thing here is still transferring cold into the hive. So I need to redesign this. Version 2.0 of this box is gonna have insulation all the way up and then there'll be some kind of insulation coming down like this and, and joining up with it. So that's part of the reason why I haven't released big plans on how to build these things yet, because I'm not done designing them. I'm still learning how they work, and uh, you know I'm, I'm trying to figure out the best way to go forward. So I'm gonna redesign this whole top area, and then I think I'm gonna have my final design, which I will share with you guys as soon as it's ready. A little weak link, but overall, these things are fantastic. Yeah, I admit that I had a bad year last year. I had a horrible drought and had a mite problem and I lost almost all of my hives. But I adapted. I changed some things. I think I did a lot of stuff better last year. And now I have six nukes and I have six big hives. And it's February 23rd and they are all alive and kicking. And I don't know if that's because of these hives or if it's because something I did, but something's going right in the Vino Farm bee yard. So I know we are definitely not out of the woods yet as far as the winter goes. We're gonna have a freezing week coming up, but you know, I also haven't been in these hives and messing with them and moving them around and carrying them into warm houses or doing crazy feeding. It's just been the bees living up here, doing their own thing with, without any intervention. Yeah, this is my mold problem and I just explained why that is and that is gonna get fixed for next year. Okay, this is just a check of cluster size and if I can see how they're doing on stores, that would be nice. Yeah, this thing's soaking wet. It's heavy. All right. Plenty of honey in here. 
I can see honey right at the tops of these frames. And remember, this doesn't look like a huge cluster because they're right here, but this is a 16 inch deep brood box. So the cluster goes down because these are vertical hives, not horizontal. So remember, you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg here. So yeah, these bees look great. In the last part of the video, I was explaining this inner cover is exposed to the outside air. The outer rim of this gets cold and this acts as a bridge that just makes this cold and the water is condensing where it's the coldest. The bees have kept the middle warm so there's no water on the inside here because this is a warm area but this has to be fixed. I need to get, I need to get this warm all the way around so that this whole thing stays dry for the bees. So that's the change I'm going to make. So hopefully the other hives aren't as bad as this, but I'm gonna clean this up and fix this going forward. And people were asking in the last video why my burlap wasn't down on the inside there. It's because this isn't acting as a wick. This is not a Vivaldi board. This burlap is just taking up the extra space up here to hopefully create a little R value in all the places that the insulation doesn't quite fit into. So it's just acting as like a blanket up here. It's not for moisture. I think this is the biggest colony in the bee yard. They, they seem the biggest. And just also to show you, the, in, the uh, insulation does dip into the inner cover. It's actually sitting up right on that wood here. That goes into here, so it, it fits in there. So the moisture doesn't seem to be affecting the bees. Bees can handle moisture. Bees like water. They don't like to get dripped on and get soaking wet, but that's not what's happening. The water is going on the outside. I don't have to look inside. I don't have to, to dig these frames out because I see honey right here. I see honey right in here. I see honey here. Yeah, I, I really don't want to crack these things and disturb them. Not as much activity coming out of the front of this box. Plenty of, plenty of food. Not as big of a cluster in the pine hive, but still very much alive and kicking. Okay, beach hive is very much hopping. This is a very busy hive out front. to wall bees. Okay, this hive, I'm seeing less honey. A lot more bees in this hive. And I'm looking over here. I'm gonna pull a frame on the outside and see if I can see honey stores out here. we doing on oh this is heavy plenty of food in here syrup honey okay I'm just gonna leave them alone now Hey, nice little cluster. Plenty of food. No worries there. So Oak Hive, this is one of the larger colonies I put into winter. Uh, see how they're doing now. I am going to be dealing with this mold. It's not, it's not a critical thing. It's outside the hive. Ah, uh, there's a beauty of a cluster. It's not even a cluster. I mean, they're, they're all around. They're wall to wall. 
no worries whatsoever. Closing you back up. It's gonna get cold. Bundle up. The next week is gonna suck. Hope you got out and pooped while you had the chance. Okay, so we have 100% survival as of February 23rd of 2022. So things are looking strong. Things are looking healthy. Uh, pine hive was the smallest cluster, the smallest amount of bees of any hive, but still kind of average for what I used to get through winter. Uh, and a couple of these hives were pretty massive. So, you know, things are looking good. We are not out of the woods yet. We still have two months really before we call this a success, but as we are right now, things are feeling really good up here. I am getting multiple emails a day and lots of comments on my videos and Instagram asking, when am I gonna have a build video? When am I gonna have plans for the bee barns? And I, I'm, I am going to, but I am not ready to put them out yet because I wanted to get through a whole season of beekeeping with these bee barns. These aren't even a year old yet. They haven't even been through a year of beekeeping. And I wanted to see how they performed. Up until about a month ago when I opened the hive and saw all that moisture in there, I thought everything was perfect. And seeing that, I realized I'm glad I didn't put out big plans and you know make a big thing about this. There are gonna be some changes to the design and I'm gonna do a version 2.0 of the hives. A lot of the same principles are going to apply to what I build next. All the hives are gonna be vertically oriented. They're gonna have a deep and a medium. They're gonna all have long continuous comb, extra long frames. They will all be highly insulated and they will all have no upper vents and no upper entrances. Those are sort of the key principles I'm going for with these hives. I do have to change how the lid connects to the body of the hive. I may have to come up with some kind of telescoping thing or I, I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna go yet. I will be posting a video about that eventually, but for now, I mean, I encourage you to sort of take what you've seen from what I've already shown and, and improvise your own thing. The bug farmer did a great video last week and he kind of copied the, the idea of the bee barn, but he tweaked it for his climate down in the south where it's a lot warmer than it is up here. And he addressed a lot of other issues that I don't have to deal with, like hive beetles and, and all kinds of things that he has to deal with down there with his hives. He tweaked his bee barn design for, for his bee yard. And that's what I encourage everyone to do. So if you wanna kind of copy what I've done, you're gonna have to wait a little longer until I redesign this thing and come up with a new video. But if you wanna be inspired by what I've done and build your own thing, by all means, go for it, you know? I came up with this out of my head, just sort of sketching in the wood shop. And this is what I got. I'm trying to share everything I, I know, every, everything I'm learning with these things, uh, so you can tweak things to your liking. But uh, stay tuned if you want exact plans. But for now, just hang tight. So that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Have a peaceful day.